Hello and welcome to the Every Animal Franchise Zoo, where I'm trying to squeeze every single Planet Zoo animal into one successful franchise zoo. Today we've got some big enclosures going in, which should help bolster the zoo's appeal quite a bit. There's also a ridiculous number of exhibit animals coming up today, so we're really ramping up in the number of species in the zoo at this point. The first animal we're building for today is the gharial. Now, I have an issue with some of the bigger crocodilians in Planet Zoo. The hitboxes on these animals can be a real problem. It can be quite difficult to get creative for the habitat for these animals because their hitbox is so wide. The way hitboxes work in the game, it's not just the width and the height of an animal you have to consider, you also have to take into account their length. For the most part, this isn't such a huge issue with most of the species in the game, but it certainly is for the crocodilians like the gharial. When you add in the fact that these species can't really climb over anything with their short legs, this means that the navigable area inside an enclosure, if you start putting in stuff like rocks and features and plants, then you're going to reduce that area they can navigate down quite a bit. So, for example, when I added the American alligator to this zoo, I spent quite a long time trying to make the enclosure look good and look like a sort of swamp in southern America. I did get this area working eventually but there's loads of space in that enclosure that the male crocodile can't navigate because of his length. What I've learned from that experience and brought into this gharial enclosure is that you're better off just making a simple enclosure and not worrying about putting in loads of rocks and banks and stuff. Unfortunately, without those features going in, the end result, the enclosure can look a little flat. On the flip side though, the gharials aren't shy creatures, so they're not going to get affected by the guests being right up near the barrier and we don't need to use those one-way glass pieces to shield them. Also, the fact that the gharials can't climb over things, that means we can have a nice low fence and the guests are going to get a great view from this enclosure because it's about waist height rather than being a giant three metre barrier like we've got for some of the other creatures in the zoo. So here's the completed gharial habitat. Compared to my usual output for the habitats, yeah, this is quite a bland and empty affair, I guess I could say. I do like the guest barrier and recolouring the water does add something to it, but the big problem in here is, yes, Mr. Big Gharial here. The female is so much shorter, they don't have a lot of issues navigating around, but this guy, he's so big, they have so many problems when you start adding nice features like rocks and stuff into the habitat. You also have to make sure the doorways are really wide for the male gharial to navigate through these. With the hitboxes, they need to be able to do a full 360 degree turn in the doorway. So yeah, the doorways are huge in this one. In all honesty, I didn't have the motivation to test my patience with this one with adding rocks and stuff around. So yeah, I just eliminated that for this one enclosure this one time. So yeah, not a particularly fancy enclosure here. It's purely functional. The gharials are happy, the guests are happy, and I guess that's what counts with a franchise zoo. Let's just call this done and move on to the next animal. Giant Anteater. This is a South American species and they get into species bonus with quite a few other animals, but you'll notice here we've added every single other one of these apart from the main wolf. So that means we're onto a combined Giant Anteater and main wolf habitat. The biggest challenge creating a combined Giant Anteater and main wolf habitat is the fact that all of the wolves in the Planet Zoo game they all need a lot more space than I think is reasonable. I don't necessarily mind when a species needs a lot of space. The problem I have is when they need a lot of space but they don't have any plant needs as well. So when you combine those two, you can end up with big empty enclosures that don't have a lot going on with them. My solution for this is adding a big backstage area that is completely empty other than maybe a hard shelter. This empty space will count as fulfilling their space needs, but the animals will spend very little time back there because there's nothing else to do in that empty space area. Since there's not a lot going on in terms of terrain with this habitat, I spent some time and created a custom fencing no shy animals in this enclosure so that means I didn't have to use the one-way glass panel to hide them from the guests. Although I did use one-way glass inside the hard shelter that's adjacent to the guest barrier just in case they did start being a bit funny about guests watching them asleep that close. In terms of plants, trees and the terrain 
the giant anteaters are okay with pretty much anything they like quite a bit of coverage once again my issue is with the wolves it really surprises me with a lot of the wolves in the game that they even though they need a lot of space they don't like a lot of coverage that's why when you create this empty backstage space it really helps with condensing the amount of coverage you've got up front anywho let's take a look at the finished habitat so a tropical South American habitat for our giant anteaters here and the main dwarf. You know, when I'm thinking about what a South American tropical environment would look like, I'll be honest, it's not like this. These fussy characters here in the back. Yes, I'm talking about you, Mr. Wolf. They're quite demanding, maybe a bit too demanding for my liking. So yeah, I am kind of pushed into a corner with this one. Can't make the luscious sort of dense undergrowth of a tropical forest sort of idea that I think would go well here. But yeah, the wolves don't like that. So we're stuck with a lot of open ground and not much going on, I'll be honest. Both species in here are quite active animals though. So there is a lot going on, lots to look at, watching them play with the toys and stuff. Very sweet. In hindsight, maybe the wolves would benefit from being in an enclosure on their own. Then at least the anteater, I could have got a little bit more creative with this environment. Hey ho, as I always say, this is franchise mode and it's not all about the decoration for this zoo. We're here for the challenge and a challenge this one certainly was. Let's just move on and see what we can do with the next animal. We've got four exhibit animals in a row after the anteater. So, wow, quite a lot of exhibit animals going in currently. As per usual, I'll get something going for that off camera. And we'll move on to the next habitat animal, which is the giant otter. Now, this is a South American tropical animal that I can really get behind. This is an opportunity to redeem the lackluster kind of enclosures that we've done to date today. Giant otters have a deep diving requirement. So that's given me the chance to play around with the terrain a little more than we have done previously today. We've conveniently got this last space on this corner of the zoo to fill and I'm hoping this is going to be big enough to work with and that'll be another section of this zoo complete. So giant otter habitat going in. A really great species to build for. They are not shy, so we don't need the one-way glass. They love a lot of vegetation, so you can get creative with the plants and trees you put in here. They do need space for deep diving, so that means putting in some sort of deep diving pool. When I'm building enclosures with deep diving, I tend to go for the above ground deep dive pools. I find personally this looks better than building a below ground pool. Of course, there is the option of making an underwater viewing area and I, for now, I've tended to shy away from that. I just personally feel like the above ground pools looks a little better than say digging under the ground and doing a pathway under there. That said, if I want to challenge myself, maybe I should build a below ground viewing area for the next deep water animal. We've got another one coming up soonish, so maybe that's something I could challenge myself to do to build a underground water viewing area for that one. Anyway, for now for the giant otter, we've got an above ground one and I feel like this works really well with the type of landscape the giant giant otter would live in. I've had the advantage of seeing a giant otter enclosure in one of the wildlife parks in the UK recently. I visited a wildlife park that had them in last year and it's still firmly in my memory what that enclosure looks like. So basing off what I saw there and a little bit of creativity in there as well, I think I've come up with a really nice idea for the giant otters here. We've got two pools, so there's the higher up one which is the deep water pool and then lower down on ground level I've got a shallower pool. About the only thing with this enclosure, the water takes up so much room and I've had to put the dry land at the back of the enclosure and guests aren't going to get a great view of the dry land bit. I've placed all of the enrichment stuff up front though, so fingers crossed they don't spend too much time back there. Maybe if they're going to have a sleep, they might go back there for that. Something I found when I was building this is that there was a lot of escape points. So around the enclosure, you'll find occasionally I've put this metal rail fencing in and that's literally there just to stop the otters from escaping over into the next door enclosure. I did find them on occasion trying to get friendly with the giant anteaters and the main wolves there, neither of which was happy about that. 
I think what's helped me create this habitat as well is with the previous couple of ones, I did them all in quick succession over one weekend. And I think I got a bit fatigued of doing so many enclosures in one go. If you find yourself running out of ideas and things aren't going so well when you're putting one together, maybe take a break and come back to it and you'll be invigorated with fresh ideas and excited again to build one of these things and put it together. Maybe I'm too conscious of wanting to get an episode of this zoo out every week and that means sometimes I have to go full throttle and do them all in one weekend just to make sure I'm getting the episodes out on time. I guess I do have to remember occasionally YouTube isn't my full-time job. I do have a job on top of this to pay the bills. Creating Planet Zoo videos is purely a hobby because I love playing the game so much and I really am obsessed with Planet Zoo. I think after I've finished with the Every Animal franchise zoo, what I might do is create a zoo that's got all of the animals in that I consider to be the really cool ones to place in the game. I'm excited to get on with other projects as well when this is over and we're at a point now where where I can start thinking about the end of the Every Animal Franchise Zoo. Hard to believe when we started we'd actually get to this point, but we're closer to the end now than we are to the beginning. That said, I had a comment last week that was asking about what I was going to do with the zoo once we'd finished it and whether I'd continue with the zoo whenever there's new DLC. My thoughts are that absolutely we will continue with this zoo until the game stops development. Either that or the final financial situation is so bad that we literally can't make money anymore or the processing gets so crazy that it just crashes on load up or something like that. So far I'm containing the issues with processing by limiting the amount of guests in the zoo. I can kind of control the money situation that way so when I've not got recordings going on I can whack up the number of guests and we get a bit of profit in that way currently. My worry is that at some point there's going to be a tipping point where even if I allow maximum number of guests in the zoo there's just way too many animals, far too many outgoing costs for all of it to function and we get to a point where we're losing money even if I've got the guests whacked up to the maximum amount. Either way, I'll keep going with this zoo as long as the game keeps going. Let's take a look at the finished habitat. Giant otters are in and I am much happier with this space than some of the previous habitats that we've done recently. When I think of tropical South America environments, this is definitely more what I had in mind. The otters really love the space. We've got the deep diving pool here and they were deep diving before, but Alas, when I come to record it, nah, they're just having a bit of a float now. Anyway, this pool's just big enough to fulfill their deep diving needs. Even managed to squeeze in a fish feeder. Haven't seen them use this yet, but I do think it works. The big main pool leads into this ground level area, which is where I've got in a shallower pool. A nice viewing area here for guests and this is where I've got most of the enrichment items as well. So kind of like a little playpen here for the otters. Very playful animals so yeah, oh here we go having a nice little swim around there in the little pool. <laughs> Dropping the ice into the pool there, you trying to make your partner really cold there? Anyway, there is a lot of enrichment items for the otters. I've also put in a little waterfall which is kind of denoting some of the water will trickle out of the deep dive pool into the smaller shallow pool here. Oh something else where I've put the feeders the keepers couldn't navigate across the water here so we've got a little bridge in which helps them get across to fill those up. The otters use that bridge as well. Backstage area this is the hard shelter for the habitat and it's a little rough back here so we're not going to spend much time looking at this. With the otters in there's also four new exhibit animals that I've put into the zoo. This includes giant boring cockroach, giant hairy scorpion and giant forest scorpion. I'm not sure if these animals could be considered cave dwellers but they felt like they fitted in here so I've put these into the back cave with the exhibit boxes we put in here a couple of weeks ago. The other exhibit gone in is the Malaysian leaf insect. For this I've created a new exhibit space at the back of the tortoise enclosure. There's a fair few tropical exhibit species coming up so I've got quite a few boxes in here to cover those off. 
with those exhibits in we're on to the next habitat animal and this is a good one we are up to the giant panda for the giant panda if you watched last week's episode you'll recall that i left the walkway at the side of the famosan bear's habitat it was incomplete and that's because i'd looked ahead and i knew the giant panda was coming up very shortly both the famosan bear and the giant panda have very similar needs so I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to have them adjacent to each other and share a walkway in the middle. They're both from a similar environment as well, although for most of bears, they prefer very mountainous regions, so really extreme terrain. The giant pandas, they prefer the lowland areas of mountains, so right at the base of a mountain, so that meant I didn't have to be quite as extreme with the rock work on this one. The other difference, the Formosan bears are extremely shy, so I had to be really careful and make sure the viewing areas were really well protected so that the bears couldn't see the guests. Giant pandas are more neutral, so it doesn't matter as much if it's a bit more open, so I've made use of that in this enclosure. Instead of having the one-way glass embedded into the rockwork, I was able to open this out a lot more. It was nice getting to complete the walkway as well, because I had an idea for this, but I wasn't always sure whether it would fit in. Custom roof work can be a pain to put into the game and it takes a little bit more fiddling than just using the bog standard roofs that come with the game but in some circumstances it's well worth it when it looks a lot better with your own custom angles and getting to put roof lights and stuff into the roofs as well. That is definitely something I think is missing from the pieces in the game at the moment. We don't have any dedicated roofs that have built-in sun windows. We've got the glass house pieces but for that you'd need to put in one of the glass house pieces and then surround it with other roof pieces which is going to make the roof absolutely huge. So yeah I guess that would work if you were making a large building but for the most part I try and avoid making massively large buildings because it kind of looks out of place in the zoo. At the moment the largest building I've got in the game is the indoor enclosure building that I made for the arctic fox and the arctic wolves. As the zoo is building up around this building it's starting to really stick out because it is so large. Even when I've put in stuff like the dedicated tropical house for the water monitors, that's still quite a small building because I've custom made it without using the standard grid size. So it doesn't noticeably stick out when you're looking at the zoo from a bird's eye view. The Arctic building, it does stick out. And I have been thinking about that building recently and what I can do about it. I don't really want to delete it and start again with that one because it's quite a lot of work that. My other thought on that is the dreaded polar bears are coming up sooner rather than later. We are going to have to deal with the polar bears. So maybe I need to see how the polar bears could fit into that portion of the zoo as well. What I really don't want is to have a portion of the zoo that's covered in outdoor snow because it's just not realistic enough for me. It's could be 26 degrees outside and I've got snow there. No, that's not going to work. My unspoken rule is any animal that needs snow in its enclosure goes into an indoor enclosure. So that is a headache that will be coming up at some point in the future. But yeah, we'll face that when we come to it, I think. Try not to worry about it too much beforehand. Anyway, back to giant pandas. For the giant pandas hard shelter, I had a specific style of building in mind for this. So this is a brand new custom building that I've created for this habitat. I'd got into the habit recently of repurposing older custom habitats that I've made for other enclosures and for this one I felt like the pandas deserve something of their own. So this is a new custom building and it did include some angles that needed a bit of fiddling to get it to work. What I get out of it is a great hard shelter that looks unique and there's plenty of sunlight coming through from all angles. There's the added benefit that guests can see right into the hard enclosure from any view really so they get to see the pandas when they're in there having a sleep. In terms of terrain the giant pandas need a lot of space very much like the famous and black bear. There was quite a lot of adjustments going on behind the scenes to get this enclosure working for them. What helped is I put in a large wooden platform at the front here so that they could have something to eat off. 
This platform's large enough that it counts as navigable land for them, so adds to that. They can also walk underneath it, so that also includes as navigable land for them. This also creates a great focal point for guests that are looking at them from the open barrier that I've got in front of this. The only reason I can have this in like this is because the giant pandas are not shy with humans, so they're not going to be bothered by this while they're trying to eat. In terms of plants and trees, I've been quite selective with the type of trees and the plants that I've put in here. I've selected trees that are quite thin and tall so that they're not blocking the view. For the plants, I've put most of these at the back of the enclosure within the rockwork because the giant pandas can't navigate across the rockwork anyway. So all the plants back there count towards their environment of having enough plantage, but it doesn't affect the navigable area and take up precious space. Plants that are dotted around the rest of the enclosure, I've made sure that the bears are still capable of walking through them, so they will happily walk through bushes and stuff, so that's all fine. So here we are, completed giant panda habitat. Really happy with how this came out. It's a big open space, but it doesn't feel very empty like some of the previous habitats we've had today. I've managed to get it all in without creating a big open backstage space. That's mostly through keeping the terrain a bit smoother than I did for the Formosan bear next door. Giant pandas do live in mountain ranges as well, but they prefer lowland areas of the mountains as well. I'm happy the connecting walkway is finished. It was bothering me that I only half completed that in the last episode. Inside here we've got the big open windows for the giant pandas because they're not scared of humans. Bit of a difference to the hidden windows we've got there for the Formosan bears. I'm happy with how this turns out. This is exactly what I had in mind for this walkway. Really great view to see the pandas from here. Yeah, look how close you can get up to them. That's perfect. You can even see inside the hard shelter from this point. And of course, here's the bears. Great addition for the zoo. These guys are going to bring in a lot of attention. Cost me an arm and a leg. I had to pay 10,000 credits for one of these. Yeah, 10,000. Hey ho, this is the main focus of the giant panda enclosure. You get to watch the pandas eating. Let's take a look inside the hard shelter too. This is a custom shelter made out of a lot of panel pieces. This means inside is lovely and bright with all of those glass pieces. Uh, Panda, did you just sit down where you pooped? <laughs> oh, don't do that, mate. You might want to sit elsewhere, you know. That's, that's not hygienic. Deary me. Anyway, rest in here. We've got a nice little bedding place set up for them. The habitat gate, I was careful to make sure there was enough room here for when they fling the boxes in. You have to make sure you leave room for them to manoeuvre around there. Sometimes they'll get stuck. But yeah, that's the pandas in now. A nice habitat for us to finish off on. Next week, we'll be starting with a bunch of exhibit animals again. There's an awful lot of those grouped together in the alphabetical order. Following that, we've got some classic zoo animals that you'll find in pretty much every zoo in the world. So I am looking forward to that. Thanks for watching today's instalment. I'll catch you in the next one.